Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. And in this video, I'll talk about how to improve latency in voice meter banana. This can apply to voice meter uh, standard and also voice meter potato as well. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to device manager. And then once you go there, make sure your network adapter drivers as well as your audio drivers are updated. And the reason I say that is typically Windows will install the generic driver for those things. And you want to make sure that you have the correct driver according to your manufacturer. Okay. And this happened to me recently. I got this machine in July of 2019. I thought for the, this whole time that I had the actual network drivers from the manufacturers to find out that it was a windows 10 generic driver. And I was having some challenges and, and those challenges went away as soon as I updated the driver for my network. So make sure your network, uh, drivers are updated and make sure your audio input drivers are updated as well. So once you go to any of these things here, you right click, go to properties, you go to driver details, update the driver or go to the actual site for the manufacturer and then update the drivers that way. So that way, you know, at least that's done because you probably have a generic driver right now. You just don't know it. And that does, that does help with latency. The next thing we want to look at is sample rate for your machine. Okay. So now sample rate is really, really important. So you want to make sure that your sample rate matches across all your devices, if that's possible. So let me just look over here for a second. Let's go to system options. Now, if you look here, most of my devices are 48,000 Hertz, right? And then the buffer is at 528. You have a buffer here that's 256. So, but most of these devices, if you look, there's like a, a, a symmetry here, right? Everything is 48,000 Hertz. Now, depending on your machine, you may not be able to do 48,000 Hertz at 24 bit resolution, but if you can, that's ideal. If you can't, then do 44,000 Hertz at 16 bit resolution, right? So what's the difference between 16 bit and 24 bit? I would explain it this way. The, the difference between 720p and 1080p. Whenever you go a higher resolution, you add more load to the machine. So if you could do 44,000 Hertz at 16, that's fair. And just be in, uh, just be mindful that most of the, most, most of those things gets compressed anyway, right? You're compressing those things anyway. So no one is really going to ask you, Hey, are you running 44? No one's going to ask that, right? So 44 at 16 or 48 at 24, ideally, as I'm say, uh, stating this, you can do, if you can push it 48,000 at 24, that's ideal. So how do you check that? Right? So you go to, let's right click here on the speaker, go to sound settings, go to sound control panel. Okay. Once we get there, you want to go to all the devices that you're going to be using and you want to make sure that every single device that you're going to be using is at the resolution that you want. So then from there, any, you can just pick anything here and then just go to properties advanced. And then here is where you would change that information, right? So if your machine, uh, if you believe that your machine can handle 48, at 24 bit that studio quality do that if you just want to make sure everything is working and then built to the 48,000 at 24 bit then just go to 16 bit at 44 and then do this process for every single device that you're going to be using okay so let's go through that process again so let's just cancel out cancel out okay so then you right click on on the speaker you come here sound control panel and then once that opens up, you go to every single device for your recording devices, as well as your playback devices and make those changes. Okay. So let's say for here, I use the ATR 2100 as a microphone. So I would right click on here properties and then go to advanced and then make the change here, right? Two channel 16 bit at uh, 48,000. Why 16 bit at 48,000? Because that's the max. So I have it there as the max, but maybe I didn't want the max. Maybe I wanted to go uh, one down 16 bit at 44. Uh, just make sure 
that whatever you use, it's a, a perfect symmetry across all the devices. And that will help as well. One thing I need to add here to check the sampling rate for the virtual audio cable, you go to the search box and start typing virtual, open up the application and in options, you can make the changes right here. The next thing that I would check by way of latency is what drivers are you currently using? So now this gives me an opportunity to correct myself because if you watch my step-by-step -step guide on how to install voice meter banana, I was using different drivers up here. I think I had a KS on one section here. I had a, a different driver here and there. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your anchor, right? A1 is the best hardware device that you have here. So whatever that is, make sure it's the best device that you have. Okay. Uh, primarily, well, when you're looking at the, the drivers, even when you look at the manual, it shows you a WDM in there as well as KS. It also talks about ASIO. Now, if you have WDM and you don't, don't have ASIO, then you want to make sure that you're using WDM drivers ac across all of the devices here. Okay. So make sure everything here is WDM once you set your anchor as WDM. Okay. So now when we look at the manual though, it talks about ASIO drivers, audio stream input output ASIO is a computer sound card driver protocol for digital audio specified by Steinberg, providing a low latency and high fidelity interface between a software application and a computer sound card. So now if we were to put this into an order of preference, and let's say you didn't have ASIO, right? You would do WDM as number one. Okay. KS as number two and MME as number three, right? The final option, right? But let's say you don't have ASIO, right? So if you don't have ASIO, you can actually go to ASIO for all dot org and get ASIO drivers. So now that will make it a little bit different for you now. So now you would have the ability to do ASIO. So let's just go to back to voice meter banana here, right? So now if I go to a one and I scroll all the way down, you will see that I have ASIO for all installed here version two, and I could use that. I'm not using it now, but I have the option to use it right where before I didn't have the option to use it. Okay. So you can install ASIO for all, and I'll have links in the description for that. So the next thing that you want to look at as you're making sure that you're using WDM across every single device, right? The next thing that you want to look at is let's go to system options here. You want to look at the buffering. Okay. So as you look at the buffering, you want to make sure that the buffer that you set doesn't distort the audio. Okay. You want to make sure that you're able to be uh, audible. You sound fantastic. So the lowest that I've been able to go here is uh, 256. And the reason it's 256, I can, well, actually, I can actually go to 192, right? But once I go to 192 and connect a device, let's say to OBS, let's say I use a voice meter inside of OBS, 192 is too low. So I begin to sound distorted. So I have to go to 256 to connect any additional things to voice meter banana. Anytime you connect an additional device or software piece, you want to make sure that your buffer accounts for that. Okay. So if you're at 160, but you have two or three other things connected, you have a VST thing plugged in and you also have something connected via OBS, let's say the, the voice meter plug in, all this puts a strain on the actual system. So you want to buffer. That's why the default is at 512, right? So if you decide to lower the buffer, then you want to make, you want to account for the, the additional software pieces that you're going to add the voice meter banana. So 256 is a sweet spot for me. Okay. And the latency for that is pretty low. I think it's like five uh, milliseconds or something like that. 
or it, it could be, I think, uh, one five twelve is maybe 10 milliseconds. We're talking milliseconds here. Okay. So two fifty six is pretty good. All right. And I know that if I open up OBS, because I have the OBS plugin pl uh, connected, then if I go to 192, I'm going to get distorted because that's too much of a strain. So once I go to 256, it's a perfect balance between latency as well as me able uh, to connect additional devices to my voice meter banana, whether that's VST plugins or anything related to OBS. So that's another way to lower that is to make sure that you can drop this as low as possible. But if you drop it so low that you don't account for the additional things that you're connecting to voice meter banana, you're going to get distorted sounds. Okay. And then the next thing I want to mention as we're sitting here, we may be talking about VST plugins in another video, but next thing I want to talk about while we're still sitting here, we talked about having the symmetry, right? We talked about making sure that the buffer is just right. Okay, we talked about 16-bit versus 24-bit uh, resolution. I'm looking at my notes here. We also talked about lowering the buffer as low as you can go, but making sure that you're accounting for the additional devices that you're connecting to voice meter banana. Okay, we talked about that. I want to make sure I didn't forget anything here. Um, okay, so the, the last thing I want to mention here is the... WDM input exclusive mode, you can mess with that to see if it lowers the buffer or if it changes anything, okay? You can also change the engine mode to Swift and see if that changes anything in terms of your buffering. And I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video, okay? So we talked about audio drivers. We talked about network drivers. Make sure you update those. We talked about sampling rate and resolution. We talked about using the same driver across all the devices, which is a correction to my step-by-step -step voice meter banana guide. We talked about using ASIO driver over WDM if you have it, okay? That's ideal. And if you do not have that, you can go to the asioforall.org website and install that on your machine and combine it with your best hardware that you have as your A1, okay? And we also talked about lowering the buffer as low as possible while uh, making sure that it doesn't affect the other pieces that you have connected to voice meter banana. And I think that's it for that part of the video. All right, this part of the video is a bonus since we got the information that we wanted to get out of the way as far as improving latency. Uh, one of the things that you wanna make sure also as you're using voice meter banana, make sure your volume levels globally are set to probably like 90 to 95%. So you're not going in the red here because I see a lot of uh, voice meter banana things in the red. So make sure you're not all the way up here. Make sure you're either negative three or anywhere underneath where it's not all the way red. Okay. So check your, your volume uh, in the output, global input output volumes. Make sure those are set uh, to a higher level so you're not necessarily straining the system here. Okay. So that's that. The next thing I want to mention also is um, clean up your machine, right? If you haven't done that in a while. And one of the best ways that I see that you can do that is to use something like Geek Uninstaller. This is this is my jam here to clean up the machine. It's uh, It removes everything well. A clean remover and force removal, a native X64 support is very easy to use. And I'm going to open mine up here so you can see what that looks like okay so i didn't put this in the beginning of the video because it didn't speak to exactly what the video was about right so i put this at the end so if you see here uh this is the setup for geek uninstaller and i really really like this program this is the only program that i use right now to uninstall anything once you install something it not only removes the program but it removes the residue of the program uh, which is fantastic uh, definitely consider cleaning up your machine. You can do that first before you do everything else, or at least, you know, once in a while, when you come over here, you'll notice that certain things are highlighted in yellow, which means that they were recently installed. And I've seen some things happen like that, where I was like, wait, I didn't install this. So once in a while, look it over here to see if anything that's highlighted in yellow is something that you, you actually installed yourself, right? Which is great to keep your machine nice and clean. Another thing too, is if you go to view... 
and you go to Windows Store Apps. This particular section, please do it at your own risk. And I'll say it again. Uh, this particular se uh, section, please use at your own risk. Whatever you delete here, be very careful and how it may affect your machine. Uh, the only thing I left was the Xbox stuff here. I left the calculator, as you can see, a couple of things that I believe that I didn't fully understand what they were by way of removing them. So like the, the, the games that come with Windows, I didn't need any of those things. So I removed things. I, I completely understood what I was removing. I kept the things that could potentially uh, hinder a program from working correctly. Okay. So this section, please uh, be careful at your own risk. But the standard section, the standard, the desk, the desktop app section, uh, just uh, clean up a little bit, you know, see what you have installed and just remove it. Your machine uh, would love the refresher and then go from there. And I think that's where I'll end the video. Thanks for watching this video. We talked about how to improve latency in voice meter banana, which affects your machine as a whole. And we also added a bonus at the end on cleaning up your machine. So thanks for watching. Uh, please share it with a friend and I'll see you in the next one.